everyone to the CX Green Room. Hi, uh, great to see you again. It's been a month since we had our last show, so very excited to be back. Um, I'm Claire Beauty, host for your show. I'm a customer engagement at uh, Genesis, and Ginger Conlon is my co host. Hello, everyone. I'm Thought Leadership Director here at Genesis. Uh, so today our topic is how to keep momentum with your customer experience transformation. And where we're going to be focusing is really on how you get the most out of your investments in cloud technology, and particularly looking at some of the innovations around areas like artificial intelligence, both in the customer and the employee experience. So I'm really excited to have two special guests with us today. Uh, first time in the green room, so very warm welcome, Yoan McRae who's Chief Revenue Officer at Sabio Group, and Stuart Dorman, who's Chief Innovation Officer at Sabio Group. So welcome, Johan and, and Stu. Really great to Thank have you. you. Uh, why don't you take a couple of minutes just to introduce yourselves and also tell us a bit about Sabio, uh, a very important partner to Genesis. So we'd love to share a bit with the audience about that. Sure. Shall I go first? Um, Please. Yeah. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at Sabio. I've been with Sabio since it was a startup, so many years now. Um, my role is spent, you know, predominantly working with our customers and our prospects, um, you know, trying to communicate what we see happening in the customer experience market, how technology is impacting the way that customers interact with organisations, and also spending quite a lot of time with our partners as well, obviously a lot of time with yourselves, so Genesis, Salesforce, Amazon, et cetera, just to really look at some of the new innovations that are coming through the market and how we can use those to drive better customer experiences. Jan, over to you. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, Jan McRae, Group Chief Revenue Officer here at Sabio. I joined uh, just over four months ago, so I take overall responsibility for the commercial, the go-to-market, very much aligned with Stuart and the execs here. Um, and I also uh, head up and heavily involved in our strategic partnership with Genesis, uh, which runs all of our main regions, so predominantly in the UK, Spain, France, Netherlands, Nordics, uh, and a growing element in South Africa as well. Um, so Genesis have been a very strategic partner to uh, Sabio for a number of years, uh, continue to be so, um, and in terms of our CX strategy, our most strategic and go-to-market partner. Fantastic. Well, yes, we're so glad to have you here. And so over the past few years, as we all know, there has been a rush um, to transform the customer experience, improve it in you know, every way that we, that we can imagine right now. And so um, that includes adding more digital interactions, more AI, moving to the cloud to support all of that. What have you seen as the impetus for this and why has it been so important? Um, I'll start, and I'm sure Stu will have valuable input. Um, I think the transition in terms of, I mean, if we go back a number of years, they were called call centres and they moved into contact centres. So that trend of introduction of more media channels and moving uh, agents and not just voice channels has been on a steady path. But you then put in, obviously, uh, the last couple of years in the pandemic has mostly accelerated an awful lot of that. A, dispersed workforce, dispersed agents were suddenly connecting from home and working the shifts and, and in some cases, 24-7 contact center operations. Um, and at that point, you needed a different uh, reference architecture. It couldn't necessarily be all on-prem with everything set up in the head offices or satellite offices. A lot of this now had to reach uh, the home office, uh, be reliant on the internet, but still allow the agents full access to all of your systems. And that isn't just your voice, that's your digital and the back office systems. So I think there's been a huge uptake over the last couple of years through the pandemic. And we've now come into, as we all know, a more hybrid way of working. But the customer expectations consistently evolve. And remember the days where Generation Y, the millennials were introduced, and Generation Z, and you know it seemed to be Generation Alpha it is here. And their expectation on how they interact with the contact centre has changed significantly, and I can talk about it when I when I think of my own children in their twenties. Um, they'll still want a voice, but they will try all the other channels all the way through. So I think the combination of a different demographics a change through the pandemic and an underlying trend anyway of that migration to multimedia and 
uh, digital channels, but the pandemic undoubtedly has been one key accelerator recently. Stu, don't know, I'm sure you've got... Yeah, no, I guess de I definitely agree with that. And to build on that, you know, the impetus has come from both sides of the fence, if you like. It's come from businesses. And when, when you use the word digital in a business, quite often what they mean is we want to be able to service the customer without the need to speak to a human. So i.e. we're driving productivity and efficiency and responsiveness and all those types of things. So that's definitely been one driver for digitization. And we'll talk in a second about how technology is for supporting that. From the consumer side of the you know, digital means that increasingly, and particularly as Johan said after the pandemic, more and more of my initial touch point with an organization is through a digital channel of some sort, whether it be a mobile app or a website. And whether I even then need to reach out and speak to somebody to get service, I still want that to be through the same medium, the same digital channel. And I think one of the things that frustrates customers and that we really need to fix as a broader industry, and, and obviously the technology supports this, is to make sure that that, intera <clears throat> that interaction is as seamless as possible. So I don't have to step out of my initial touch point to somewhere else to solve my problem and step back in again and jump around and lose all of that information. So. I, th I think, you know, as a consumer, to me, digital means I just want to go to one place and have my interaction solved. And I just just to build on that, I think, you know, often when people talk about digital, they talk about the channel that the customer uses. And again, you know, I, frankly, as a consumer, don't really care. I just want to solve my problem. Um, and, you know, we often think of messaging and web chat and asynchronous messaging as digital channels. But over recent years, um, AI has, has really enabled voice to be a digital channel because we can automate on it. We can, you know, use it to digitize the customer interaction and solve problems without the need to speak to a human. So actually pretty much every channel that a customer interacts with these days is a digital channel. The question is, can we completely digitize the experience that the customer has based off the back of it? So, yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting time. I think the technology is there. It's getting organizations to really adopt it and make it customer centric is is the challenge of our time. Absolutely. And it's interesting, some of the things that you pointed out reminds me of some of the findings of our state of customer experience report, one of which, one of which is that consumers want first contact resolution. And the other one is how frustrated they get by these disjointed experiences, especially hitting dead ends. So like you said, making sure that there's a consistent flow through the the whole journey really so with, with all of what you said you know and you talked a lot about digital and how that really means like everything these days what are you seeing as some of the key elements of cx transformation for many of the companies that you're working with that maybe is include technology but also you know people process related aspects yeah so we just, oh, go on, you go first young <laughs> Thanks. Um, I think historically, and going back, everyone's operated, it seems as if they're operated somewhat in silos. So again, when you look at customer experience, you may have the website being developed predominantly or historically more with marketing. You then got your go-to-market, your sales, your commercials, and your various other aspects and departments. And to some extent, it wasn't completely joined up and not necessarily the customer experience is central across an entire business. What we've certainly seen a significant change in that over time, where it's more of a joined up approach from an organization, cross department, customer experience at the key, integration, as we've already mentioned, of voice and digital channels. Um, <clears throat> Ginger, you mentioned at the start there, which I think is a key aspect that people have somewhat overlooked silos uh, and being able to work more of a joint similar messaging starting to look at the customer experience you bring up a really good point customer journey where i think you said dead end at the end of multiple interactions and that is still key all too commonplace but still being addressed and you not only to Stu's point of ai being a digital channel that people are now uh, adopting it's the customer data and that joined up single view of a customer, regardless of the channel, regardless of the medium or device or the time necessarily that they call in, it's joining that experience up. And underneath any of the contact centers in CX experience is that customer data, access to it, making intelligence of it and actually bringing it to the fore. Um, and that's a big area here, Sabio, we're focused on outside of 
AI been doing it for about 10 years. Contact centers is, is the core of Sabio 25 years experience. And that data integration in the single view and making it common across all multiple platforms and therefore departments is a key focus for us moving forward, supporting customers. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I think I think one of the things that um, there's a couple of things that have held organisations back from delivering that joined up experience. You know, yeah, I mentioned the, the internal silos has been a big challenge for a long time, and it still is for quite a lot of organisations. You've got different people owning the web journey, um, different people owning the operations and the contact centre, and there's a bit of a no man's land that exists between those. You know, from from an organisational perspective, we are seeing that start to change now, but. There's still a long way to go there for many organisations. The technology hasn't always supported it either. So, you know, uh, contact centres have always had um, lots of kind of very robust, but but quite difficult to integrate with, you know, on-prem technology. And what it's meant is that you've had to kind of um, drip feed, if you like, lots of smaller point solutions in and around the contact centre to be able to engage in chat and messaging and all these different things. And that in turn has driven data silos, which means you don't get that joined up view of the customer. So I think again, as, as the market evolves and matures, and, and we increasingly see more and more organisations move to a cloud platform that's able to do everything you know, within a single platform, Genesis obviously being a great example of that, then we're starting to gonna see, we're, we're gonna see much more joined up data across the whole customer journey, which in turn will drive more joined up thinking as to how we can deliver seamless experiences and just get a much clearer view on who the customer is and what they're looking to solve. I want to pick up on, you know, what you were saying about moving to cloud platforms. Uh, a lot of customers, companies moving to cloud platforms, but maybe doing, you know, a straight up re replacement or looking to do a replacement. They've invested in cloud technology, but now they're wondering a bit, now what? How do I get the most out of this investment? Um, so what do you see that as an issue? Um, do you want me to make a start with that one? Yeah, go on. You you, you go yeah. ahead. Your turn, Stu. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yes. Yes, we do. I think um, there are um, organisations out there that have moved to cloud but carried on with older business models, which are very much, you know, waterfall. Um, you deliver a project and then and then you move on to the next one. Um, and I think if you take that approach with cloud, um, you actually run the risk of of taking a bit of a step backwards and, and um, you know, actually increasing the cost of running your infrastructure without necessarily harnessing the benefits. So if you just treat it like an infrastructure modernization project, then, you know, you're not really setting yourselves up for success. If you go into a project looking at it as a, as a digital transformation focus, which means that the experience of the customer and or the experience of the employee needs to materially change in a measurable way, um, then, then you're setting yourself up for, uh, for for success. And then I think looking forward, in order to really harness what the cloud can do, it means being agile. It means you know A/B testing, uh, trialing out different scenarios, and you know um, uh, constantly evaluating using data whether it's a success or not. You know, one Genesis Cloud is a great example where you know we've got many many customers using Genesis Cloud, but there were 242 features I think released last year, and customers need to make sure they're in a position where they can continue to take advantage of those new features as they come on board and, and evolve their operation on a daily basis. You know that that's really how to set yourself up to take advantage of the cloud. Yeah, and any any more thoughts? On that? No, I th as ever, you covered it perfectly. So I think, uh, it, to some extent, we're seeing um, a, a lot of customers are at different aspects of their cloud transformation. Um, you know, there is still a very large segment of the market, particularly here in the UK, that is still on-prem. So they've got elements of hybrid cloud deployments. So they might have moved voice. They might have moved some of their digital channels. But because of the long-standing contact center market in the UK, there's a huge amount of on-prem integration. Now, a lot of customers' desire is ultimately to move to a hybrid or a public cloud deployment. Uh, they want to transition a lot of their contact center along with yourselves at Genesis. But you have to remember that over 10 years, there's been a huge amount of on-prem integration. So very complex integrations, a lot of CTI links, a lot of API development. You can't simply overnight lift and move and migrate that to the cloud. So we're seeing a lot of customers ultimately on that journey, 
hybrid, pure cloud, public cloud. Um, but the integration, the migration, and making sure that there's no loss of functionality or no loss of customer data and the single view of the customer, but while still giving an exceptional customer experience. So we're working with a lot of customers who have started that migration, um, continue to do so, and ultimately that's the destination. Each will take a slightly different journey on getting there, and that's to be expected, um, either for the technology they've got, the technology they're moving to, but the customer experience they want to do. I think to Stu's point, as customers start migrating the majority of their systems into the cloud, then that that isn't the end of the journey. Um, some may argue that's the start. It's a consistent evolution. It doesn't matter almost what sector you're in, whether it's public sector and offering a public service, it's in retail, finance, manufacturing, commercial. You always want to give a customer experience. And because of demographic changes, technology advancements, a customer experience or a customer expectation will never change, will never stop and stay the same. Therefore, your service can't stay the same and the technology won't. So to Stu's point, you know, uh, don't be afraid to try and adopt technology. You can do it in small parts. You can do it in sandbox designs. You can try it with a small part in department. Constantly try and evolve and see whether it resonates with your customers. Consistently get customer feedback as to their, their experience. I say, Ginger, I'm going to keep quoting on it, that, you know, the end point, the destination, and, and does it all end your customer journey? And if you get the feedback and suggestions, evaluate it and try as I say, it's consistently evolving. The journey, you're always on it. My advice would be don't, don't be afraid. Plan accordingly, but don't, don't be afraid to adopt technology, particularly the rate in which it's uh, adopting and being brought to the market. I think some really good points there about it being you know, the start of the journey, not the end of the journey when you move to cloud. And just the mindset, you know, continuous you know, business transformation, looking at all the innovation that's coming out and finding opportunities to sandbox and trial. There's really so much that you can do. Absolutely. And when you think about going back to our state of, state of uh, CX report, um, the CX leaders we surveyed for the report two of the most common thing, things that they said about moving to cloud uh, benefits wise is this faster access to connected data and making it easier to add you know features and functionality so really exactly what both of you have been saying and how important that is and the opportunities that that brings so if you think about cloud as foundational for customer experience but also for getting going with ai and really making it easier to to get AI in more parts of the customer and the employee experience, um, whether it's getting you know smarter about the customer, being more efficient, supporting employees, mm -hmm. is there an optimal place to start with AI? And if so, what's the first step? Stu, maybe you can jump in with that. Yeah, sure. So um, I mean, this is something we've been doing for many, many years at Savio. As Jaren said, we've had an AI practice for quite some time now. You know, historically using um, speech recognition technologies. And what we've seen over the last few years is that conversational AI has become uh, ubiquitous in the sense that it's, it's democratized. It's become much more cost effective for a larger, you know, any organization to deploy. It used to be just the larger organizations that could use it. So what, what we found um, over the last few years, and we've had, you know, 30, 40 customers that have gone through this process with us is to deploy um, conversational AI uh, at the first point of the customer touch point to the organization. So maybe it's on some incoming voice calls or on the website somewhere. We just inject AI to a subset of those calls, maybe 5% of the calls coming in and treat it a bit like a concierge and just simply ask the customer, hey, thank you for calling Savio. How can I help you today? And simply using it to capture data to start with to understand why customers are calling and then just routing it on their journey as they would have done previously and we, we run this process over an eight week period and build up quite a detailed intent model and at the end of that eight week period it gives us a very very rich set of data to help us build a business case and understand um, how we can drive an automation strategy how we can prioritize different types of contacts and introduce AI to an organization in a very seamless way but with very very clear metrics and data as to what value it's going to deliver 
And that's that's been the route that we've we've gone on with many, many organizations, you know, very well known, like British Airways, Marks and Spencers, Vodafone, many organizations have gone through that route with us and are really seeing a lot of success now. Because AI, you know, conversation AI is a journey. It takes many, many years to to really uh, reach its full potential. And obviously it's increasing in its value all of the time as well. Its capability improves year on year. The cost goes down year on year. So it's very much a long, long running journey that you need to go on. What's been interesting over the last year, though, is the introduction of generative AI. And that's o opening up a whole new avenue of opportunity for us to solve customer problems. Um, so, you know, th th there's a few areas that we think this is, well, it's already enhancing what we're doing around AI. So one is creating much more sophisticated voice and chatbots. Um, it's allowing us to look at email handling and make that process much more intelligent in terms of routing and automating email handling. And obviously that applies not just to email, but for um, other, other chat and messaging interactions as well. Um, it's allowing us to do things like summer, um, uh, reduce wrap times by summarizing the interactions at the end of, end of the call. And I think what we're going to see is the contact center really will be the frontier for where generative AI starts to, to, to gain traction in an organization first, simply because we measure those environments so much. We know exactly how much every second is worth and, and it's very easy to demonstrate productivity with generative AI. So there's some super exciting case studies and references that we're working on at the moment with Gen AI to really drive much higher levels of automation outside of what you traditionally think of as a voice bot and a chat bot. And um, yeah, we're, we're really excited about how that's going to manifest itself over the coming months and years. And it, you know, one of the big priorities that we've seen um, in our you know, executive surveys is in making the employee experience much more enjoyable, less stressful, you know, really equipping um, you know, agents to have you know, great conversations. And that's where some of these AI technologies can just be you know, transformative, uh, just mm -hmm. getting the right piece of information at the right time or wrapping up calls so that admin is reduced. Uh, so, yeah, we see lots of application around that. Yeah, I mean, I, I sort of think of it whenever you touch a keyboard, that's an opportunity for generative AI to drive value. And, yeah. you know, whether you're typing up notes after the call, whether you're searching a knowledge base for information, whether you are responding to a customer through email or chat, all of those um, interactions can be massively streamlined by using this technology. And, and that's going to have a massive impact in terms of improving the well-being and the, the role of, of an advisor in the contact centre. And it already is, you know, we already have lots of customers using auto summarization with um, generative AI capabilities. So, um, you know, already, you know, massively reducing cost and improving customer experience. So last question uh, before we wrap for the day. Um, we've talked about cloud platforms. We've talked about AI. What are some of the other big trends uh, that you uh, can see reshaping customer experience or employee experience ahead? I'll start, Stu. Um, I think some of the more we, we touched on generative AI, and I think that's going to be a, have a massive input as people start implementing that and yeah, becomes more intelligent in its own right. I think you, you've always got to balance two aspects when you look at this. You, um, and you touched on it, Claire, with the, the agent well-being. Yeah, uh, in terms of making sure that they've got all the tools, the technology, the work-life balance, uh, the flexibility to make sure that they can do their job. Obviously, you know, if the agents are looking after and the customer experience representatives are looking after customers, you'll increase customer experience as a whole, regardless of technology. And I know people don't, that should never be overlooked. That That's critical. Within that, one area that we focused on, and each are growing in their own right, and, and Genesis have been forefront in this, um, you know, AI has been around for a while and we've adopted it quite heavily with our customer base. Equally, CCAS, and obviously you're a market leader in that space, but more recently we've seen the introduction of data being absolutely critical within that offering customer experience. And that should never, ever be us, uh, underestimated. Where's the data sat? How accessible is it? How unique is the data against a particular individual? And can they get that single journey? And then obviously with your recent announcements and um, we've been a Salesforce partner for a number of years here at Sabio, it's obviously that CRM integration is just one example. So when you look at CCAS, AI data or CRM as individuals, 
they'd most surely all been around in their own part and adopted to some extent, thinking all of those together, whilst maintaining agent well-being and agent experience and customer experience, whether that be on-prem, hybrid or pure cloud, and the adoption of the likes of generative AI, that suddenly becomes quite complex. Absolutely possible, and we do it day in, day out with our customers, but that is the journey that people are on. So will there be more technologies, Claire, to answer your question? Absolutely, there will be. And we've already seen the explosion of that technology. But where customers are on their journey at the moment to give their customers the experience they want, you know, when people look at those four pillars and they want them fully integrated and drive efficiency, productivity, and customer experience, I think for the for the next year or two, that's going to be a huge amount of work to get those customers on those pl platforms and then continuously optimize them, which is a lot we do with our customers. Shoot, you no doubt will have a, an added opinion. Yeah, no, I, I agree with all of that. I'm super excited about the AI stuff, and I know we've talked about that a lot in this call, but you know, one of the foundation elements that I think is missing is just embedding service more deeply into digital experiences. So, you know, clicking straight through to a web web journey, for example, to speak to somebody um, is, is an obvious one to fix, but so few organisations do it well. But what that also opens up is the ability for then the agent who's dealing with the interaction to be able to not just talk to the customer, but to be able to start sharing content and information, much like we're all used to doing in the back office with Teams and you know Zoom and all these things, you know, a picture paints a thousand words. And if you can share content with a customer explaining a complex product or service or something like that whilst you're speaking to them, I think that's a really exciting um, dimension that adds to digitization that people don't often think of. But I think it could really drive you know more engaging experiences between organisations and customers. And I think, you know, bringing all of this data together is really exciting as well. Yeren talked about well-being. That's a big focus for us. But, you know, we're also seeing a lot of organisations really looking at their planning process at the, at the moment, making sure they're optimising their resources in the right way, but factoring in well-being and the data that they get from AI to have a much more focused and um, granular planning process around the different types of interactions that are coming on board. So I think it's a really exciting time. There's a, you know, the, the way that we're applying technology in contact centres and customer service now is super exciting, but we're really just scratching the surface of what can be done. So that's the exciting stuff for us, really. Oh, I agree on that 100%. I mean, there is so much opportunity and it's so exciting to talk about it with you today in the CX Green Room. So uh, thank you both so much for being here and sharing all of your expertise and some of the things that Savio Group is working on as well. And uh, for all of you listening today, please be sure to share the show with your colleagues, uh, mm -hmm. like, and um, you know, spread the good word. And we will see you next time in the CX Green Room. Thank you very much. Thank you.